thank you. Um, before I begin, um, I'd like to thank my co-authors and supervisors, um, Ed Gary and B. Lawrence, for their contributions to this work. Okay, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about elevator evacuation, context, and history. Uh, I'm then going to talk about some of the challenges we face with elevator evacuation. Um, I'm then going to introduce the elevator model we've developed in building into this. Um, now I'm going to pass over to Ed, who's going to talk a bit about some of the simulations we're running with the new model and some of the results we've got out. So I think uh, by this point we're all pretty familiar why um, elevators are uh, an attractive option to use during uh, high-rise evacuations. Um, and as we've heard already, a number of high-rise buildings throughout the world already uh, incorporate elevators as part of their fire or non-fire evacuation strategies. It's also interesting to note as well that there are a number of hospitals um, which use elevators as part of their evacuation strategy in addition to a number of um, air traffic control towers due to the small footprint they have. Um, elevators have successfully been used during real evacuations. I've mentioned a few up here. Um, I put a question mark next to the World Trade Center event um, because we've heard that um, some 3,000 people uh, evacuated in Tower 2 um, during uh, the evacuation. However, what's interesting to remember is that a number of people evacuated using elevators without being told to evacuate. And I think it's important to remember this fact. Um, in addition, elevators sort of cause injuries to real evacuations, and I think it's really important that we remember this and, and learn from them. Um, again, quite interestingly, is the World Trade Center bombings, um, where a number of people were trapped inside elevators for many hours. Um, also, in the 9-11 attacks, the USA estimates that at least 200 people died in elevators. Okay. Now, in all of these cases, elevators were not intended to be used during evacuations. Okay. So we clearly identified that elevators can provide benefit, however, they can and do fail. And we need to take into consideration this when we devise evacuation strategies. So essentially there are three challenges we face with elevator evacuation. There are the mechanical issues. How can we make the inner workings of elevators resilient to hazardous scenarios? Um, and quite a bit of uh, progress has been made in this uh, area. Um, the, the next issue is operational. How can we efficiently use elevators to evacuate people from the building? Um, and the third issue is human factors. How are people going to behave given that they've got the option to use elevators? Um, this is the topic has received little attention to date. So, in this paper, uh, we're addressing operational issues through computer simulation. And we've um, developed an elevator model in Building Exodus to help us perform this task. Uh, the model can represent uh, various mechanical aspects of the elevator system and some human factors associated with elevator evacuation. With regards to mechanical features, uh, the model can represent uh, various physical aspects of an elevator system, uh, the kinematics, the jerk, the acceleration, the maximum speed, um, and various delay times. There's also a control mechanism which allows users to define how uh, the elevators will move during the simulation, where they will go. Uh, these features are configurable via the user interface or via a script file. Um, I remember hearing uh, earlier today that uh, the World Trade Center has hundreds of, uh, at least a couple of hundred elevators, um, and the use of a script file can ease the task of defining this within a simulation. Okay, now with regards to uh, the agent model within Building Exodus, um, we've identified uh, three, three decisions uh, that agents have to make during an elevator evacuation. Um, there are other types of decisions, but these are the key ones we've identified um, to represent in our model. The first type is initial elevator stair selection. Now, I don't know uh, what factors influence decision making, so what we're required to do is make, um, develop an initial model um, based on a number of assumptions. 
Um, so we have three methods to represent this task in the model. Uh, first method, a user can explicitly define the device an agent will use within the simulation. The second method, um, agents can select their nearest device to use during the simulation, or they can select their nearest device of a given type. For example, they'll use their nearest stair or their nearest elevator. Now, the third uh, method um, uh, allows agents to select their nearest device of a given type, such that all of those devices on that floor will be adopted by approximately an even number of agents during the simulation. And this is intended for users who are interested in looking at optimal building uh, evacuation performance. Okay? We don't want to look um, at situations where the cores of the building are artificially um, loaded with different numbers of agents. So hopefully this, uh, this system will help with that. The second type of behavior we're required to represent is the weight location. Um, this is when agents elect to use an elevator um, during simulation. They go to the elevator weight area and they have to choose a place to wait. <laughs> now it might appear quite trivial to choose uh, why is the place you wait that important, but ultimately it also decides what elevator you might use. So it is actually quite important, and it could also uh, determine how long your evacuation is. So we, again, we don't understand how people perform these tasks. So we've got two methods here um, where agents either select a random, uh, a random location to wait, or they select a random location uh, based on a minimum distance from the elevator. And we thought this would perhaps represent people who don't want to overcommit to using one elevator. They want to stand back and uh, keep their choices open before choosing to use an elevator to use. Um, and the last type of behaviour is car boarding behaviour. When an elevator car opens, who chooses to get in it? Okay. Again, we don't understand how people perform these tasks. So uh, what we've done, we've assumed a number of things, and we've said that the nearest agents to the elevator will elect to board that uh, elevator. And we don't get large crowds trying to fit in an elevator they won't fit inside. Um, there's no competitive behaviour. So, I mentioned before that these are all types of behaviour we don't understand. Um, and to address this, we're conducting an online survey to try and address um, and try and find out how people perform each of these tasks. Um, we're looking at a number of influencing factors within the survey, um, such as travel distance, uh, past usage, uh, familiarity and culture. Um, and we pose a series of hypothetical situations and ask people how they would respond. Um, at present, we've got over 430 participants who have taken part in the survey um, from 22 different countries. We have both an English and a Chinese version of the survey. Um, we're obviously interested in seeing whether people would behave differently in different cultures. And being as China is an emerging market for high-rise buildings, we thought it was appropriate to have a Chinese version. Okay, I'm now going to, um, and I would like to invite you to complete the survey and to ask your friends and family to also complete the survey. We're really interested, really, in anyone's uh, you know answers, um, and we're grateful. I'm grateful for anyone here who's already completed it. Um, right now, I'm going to pass over to Ed, who's going to talk about some of the simulations. Thanks. Okay, so we've taken the model that uh, we've developed and we've applied it to a study of a 50-storey, hypothetical 50-storey building uh, with 7,800 people in the building. And we're looking at four different evacuation strategies. And the question is, what is the optimal strategy to empty this building as quickly as possible? The building uh, has uh, 32 uh, elevator cars in banks of uh, eight, uh, four banks of eight. Uh, there are also four stairs, four staircases in the building. Uh, the elevator attributes are based on the CFC guide D, so we have all the acceleration jerk and, and so on uh, uh, properties of the elevators, the opening and uh, closing times of the doors, uh, and so on. 